when I was pregnant, I scoured every single article and video that I could find to make sure that my registry was perfect and full of all of the things that we would end up using all of the time. And still somehow I missed a bunch of things that we ended up needing to buy within the first year or I registered for things that really did not work for us and I had to purchase alternatives. This is the video where I share with you all of those mistakes that we made and what we found that actually worked a lot better so that hopefully these will make your life easier and your baby's life easier. I wanna preface this video by telling you that you by no means need to buy every single thing in this list. This is just the things that my family ended up really loving and if it doesn't work for your family that is totally okay but i will tell you exactly why these items worked well for us and why their alternatives did not work well for us all of the items that i mentioned in this video will be listed in the description box with affiliate links and if you click through with one of these links and make a purchase i will earn a small commission at no extra cost to you and I really appreciate it because it really helps out this small YouTube channel. Let's get right into it with number one. We had two diaper bags. We registered for one and then another one was gifted to us even though it wasn't on our registry. The one that we registered for was super simple. It had a bunch of pockets different compartments so that we could find exactly what we needed. It had an insulated side container and we really loved it. We have used it all the way from when our daughter was in the hospital until she stopped needing a diaper bag completely within this last year now that she's almost five. However, the one that was gifted to us was a super fancy diaper bag. It is so cute. It is so, so beautiful and it is still sitting in the bag that it came in. The reason that I ended up never using it was because I was always just like, uh, I can't take it there, it'll get dirty. I can't take it there, it'll get dirty. I can't take it to the zoo. I can't take it to the library. I don't wanna put it on a floor in a public restroom while I'm changing my daughter's poopy diaper. I never wanted to get it dirty or take it anywhere where it could get scuffed or dirty, which is basically everywhere, especially when you're with a baby. So my first recommendation is get a diaper bag that is on the cheaper side, but is super comfortable to wear. The one that we had had padding on the back so that it wasn't super hard against our back, had a bunch of different zippers and compartments inside so that we knew exactly where to find whatever we needed in that moment, and also is okay if it gets dirty because it's not like it's going to leave a big mark or a big stain on something that is easily washable anyway. The second one was probably the biggest purchase that we made that was completely off of our registry and that was a baby carrier with lumbar support. We actually registered for a baby carrier that didn't have really good support. It did have good reviews, it was on the more affordable side, and we were really thankful that someone purchased it for us, and we used it for the first few months of our daughter's life, but once she started getting bigger and heavier, it became more and more uncomfortable. It was like I was hunched over whenever I was using it. I already have really bad posture, so I felt like it just added more to my bad posture. And by the time that our daughter was a few months old, I didn't want to baby wear her at all anymore. So only my husband was using it and it eventually got uncomfortable for him too. At that time, we decided to go ahead and buy a much more comfortable baby carrier that had lumbar support, thicker padding, and had a whole bunch of different ways that we could carry instead of just one or two ways to carry. We ended up using that carrier for a really long time. We loved it and we were using it every single time that we went out. That was the Lily Baby Carrier. I hope that I'm pronouncing that right, but we really loved it. It had great support on the back and then it also had a clip right behind between your shoulders and it had thick pads and then we could face her a whole bunch of different ways. It even had a way that you could like open it up and it was just a mesh netting in case baby gets hot and it worked for us so much better than the baby carrier that we had originally registered for. 
The next item is the Frida Baby Nail Clipper. This nail clipper is different from other baby nail clippers. On our registry, we actually registered for like this little pack of toiletries for baby that came with like a little nose syringe, a nail clipper, um, one of those finger toothbrushes, and a whole bunch of different things and like half of them ended up not working at all or just being things that ended up going in the trash. The nail clipper we used like once and it was really hard to actually clip it down completely and I was really worried that I was going to end up using it on my daughter's skin and actually making her bleed. So I was really scared that it was going to cut her. That's when we purchased this free to baby nail clipper. So we purchased it after she was born and I want to show it to you because you see that little opening right there. That's actually an opening so that then whenever their nail is in between, you can actually see where their nail is so that you see exactly what you're going to be cutting. And I love this so much that I still use this with my daughter. Now that she is almost five years old, we still use this every single time that we're cutting her nails because I have never once cut her skin. I have actually though bumped her head on the way into like putting her in the car seat. So I am still a real mom, <laughs> but I've never cut her skin. And I think that it's thanks to this nail clipper because I can see exactly where I'm cutting before I cut it. So definitely recommend this one. It is 100% worth it. The next item is Quick Zip Crib Sheets. If you haven't heard of Quick Zip, and this video is not sponsored by anyone, but if you haven't heard of it, it's a crib sheet that instead of putting it over the top of the mattress, it comes in two parts. It comes in a base, which goes underneath the mattress, and then the top part, which you zip all around. So in case your baby like spits up on it or whatever, instead of taking off the whole crib sheet, you just zip off the top and then replace it with a new one that you zip onto the top and then just wash the top zipper one. And then you change out the base every once in a while. But these sheets help out so much. They cut down so much on having to change out sheets, especially when you're in a rush, if it's in the middle of the night or something, you don't wanna take out the entire mattress and change out the entire sheet if your baby spit up on it or had an accident. So just having this was so, so incredibly helpful plus the waterproof mattress pad that we use. I will be linking that down below too, but the quick zip crib sheets, I'm surprised that more people don't know about them. We loved them so much. My sister also used them and loved them so much and I can't recommend them enough. They saved us so much time and so much hassle. This one is not rocket science. Everyone recommends a diaper genie. However, how you use it is the important part and it could save you a lot of money. A diaper genie comes with special bags that go inside of it or you can get one of those refillable packets which has like the really long bag that you go through. However, if you are putting every single diaper in there, you're gonna go through those extremely fast and you're gonna end up spending a lot of money over the first couple of years just replacing those bags constantly all the time. Instead, what I recommend is to get a diaper genie plus get a little trash can right next to it that has a closable lid that you can just use your foot to open the lid and close it so that it's easier when you have your hands full and put baby's pee diapers inside the trash can, put the poopy diapers only inside the diaper genie because the diaper genie is going to keep the smell of the poopy diapers in there. Whereas the pee diapers, you're gonna go through so many of those so fast. So taking that trash out once a day or once every couple of days is okay, but the poopy diapers, you want that smell to stay in there so that it's not just floating around in baby's room or wherever you're changing their diapers. And that is going to save you a whole lot in having to buy those reusable, specific fitted bags for the diaper genie. So poopy diapers in the diaper genie, pee diapers in the regular trash can that's right next to it with a lid so that the smell still stays in there. The next item I wish we had registered for but we didn't register for, believe it or not, is a white noise machine. 
I always thought that a white noise machine was going to be kind of lame. I thought that my baby would fall asleep to lullabies or something that was a lot more soothing than white noise. Turns out babies actually really like white noise, but originally we had gotten this, which is like a little animal that has, you can turn on the light so it has like stars that project on the ceiling, you can change it with different colors, and then it has a bunch of different noises, songs, and then it turns off after a while. As opposed to a white noise machine, which if you get the right kind, it stays on literally all night. So why I recommend the white noise machine is because it's a lot more simple for your baby to help keep them asleep and it'll drown out the noise from like if you're watching TV in the next room or you have someone over visiting in the next room, it'll drown out that noise whereas something like a lullaby isn't going to drown out that noise and what we found specifically for our daughter, and this doesn't apply for every single child, but what we found specifically for our daughter was that she will literally not fall asleep if there is anything stimulating going on. So if there is any type of music, if there is anything to look at on the ceiling, like stars or anything colorful, she will literally not fall asleep. She needs the entire room to be completely boring <laughs> in order to actually fall asleep. That's why the white noise machine really went hand in hand with just keeping everything monotone in her room. The next item was something that we really wish that we had registered for, and that is a portable high chair. It seems like high chairs are really far in the future when you're pregnant, but actually six months goes by kind of in a flash, especially those first six months. It feels like the days last forever, but then the weeks and the months start to fly by, and next thing you know it, you need a high chair, and then next thing you know it, you're going to visit a grandparent's house and they don't have a high chair or you're going to the park and you want to sit and feed your baby for a little bit, but you don't really have a good spot to put them in so that they can sit while they eat during a picnic. That's where the portable high chair came in. I saw one of my friends had these and she would go out camping a lot with her little one, so they would use this all the time when they were camping. Not a camping person here, but I was like, this looks awesome. I want to take this everywhere. So we ended up buying one. We took it to grandma's house because she didn't have a high chair. The great thing about this portable high chair is that you could either put it like on the floor or like on the grass if you're at the park, or you can put it on an actual real chair, like a dining chair, and it has straps that go around both the back of the chair and underneath the seat and you can tighten them so that it's completely secure and put your little one in there and just bring them up to the table so that they actually are sitting with everyone else and are at a proper height so that they can sit with everyone else at the table. The little table that it comes with is removable so you can use the table when you're on the go or you can just remove it if you are sitting at a dining table with a bunch of other people. Highly recommend this portable high chair. Definitely a really good buy. Should have registered for it in the first place. The next one is a pack and play. Now, the pack and play is one of the items that, the rare items on this list that we actually did register for, but someone told us to get a bassinet instead of a pack and play to put in our room for the first few months when our daughter was sleeping in our room so that we could get to her quickly. However, we decided to buy the pack and play instead and I'm really glad that I did, so I wanted to tell you why and still mention it in this video. With a bassinet, your baby is going to grow out of a bassinet as soon as they are able to stand or they're just going to get too big for the bassinet, whereas with a pack and play, it's a lot larger, so it grows with them. The one that we had had multiple levels, so it had a little bit of a higher level, which worked out well when she was a newborn, and then it had a lower level, which worked out well when she was a toddler. We were able to move it to the living room during the day sometimes, but mostly we kept it in our bedroom. It also had a little changing area so that in the middle of the night, we could just pick her up from that area, put her onto the changing table, change her, and then put her back down where she was sleeping. 
just in case we had any like spills or anything like that we didn't want it to get on the spot where she was sleeping so we wanted it to stay on the changing table area the middle part though it was still kind of hard so we didn't want her back on that so we did end up buying specifically a mattress that was fitted for a pack and play and it was actually a lot cheaper than i thought it would be and it worked out really really well we used the pack and play for the entire time that she was sleeping in our room and then once she got older we started putting her in her crib for half of the night and then bringing her back to the pack and play for the other half of the night that's a whole other story but if you want a video about how we transitioned her to sleeping in her own room and also transitioned her to sleeping through the whole night then definitely let me know and i can make that video but the pack and play was so helpful. We got so much use out of it. We were able to take it to other people's houses if we needed a safe place for her to play there. Mostly it stayed in our room, but it was so useful for those first couple of years of her life. The second to last item that I wish that I had registered for is actually something really small. It's these little puree spoons. It was this little package that had these two little spoons that you literally twist onto a baby puree. However, something that we did register for instead of thinking of this was our own puree maker and container that I thought I was going to be able to make my own purees with and then squeeze them into each of the little pouches. This was something that I ended up literally not using, not even once, didn't take it out of the box. I don't know why I thought I would have time to make my own purees at home. I am an ambitious person in my head. Didn't work out. Ended up using a whole bunch of store-bought purees which was totally okay these spoons definitely came in handy you might not be using purees with your baby that's totally okay you might be making your own purees you can definitely use this on a lot of those packages for your own purees i would check to make sure that they are still compatible so that you could feed them on the go the last item that I wish was on my registry but wasn't because it wasn't out yet is this book, Baby Sign Language. And yes, I did write this book. So I am tooting my own horn here. But the reason that I wrote this book was because a lot of baby sign language books end up on baby registries and a lot of them have incorrect signs that they try to pass off as real sign language signs or they have illustrations that don't accurately show the signs, which is exactly why I created this book as an ASL interpreter who really knows sign language. I wanted to make sure that I put real ASL signs in this book and also showed the signs clearly. The book has pictures of real kids showing you every single sign instead of illustrations, which are typically found in other books. It also has a smaller picture of my own hands showing you each of the signs and how to teach your baby the sign, how it looks when your baby does the sign, how to make the sign yourself, and other tips, songs, games throughout. So I really wanted to make this book all encompassing. And if you are interested in teaching your baby sign language, that is a topic that I cover a lot on this channel. So I highly recommend that you subscribe and grab a copy of this book to put on your registry. Now, I want to hear from you. What items do you wish that you had put on your registry? Definitely leave them in the comments so that we can all learn about what the best items are for our little ones. If you're interested in teaching your baby more sign language, definitely check out the other videos on this channel. And if you want to see more mommy content like this and more parenting content like this that isn't all about teaching your baby sign language, let me know. I want to know what kind of content you want to see on this channel. Thank you so much for watching and happy signing!